RLS Productions presents Concerts in the Gardens held at Omi Gardens this coming summer. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I can't, I can't hear you. It's Tuesday, <laughs> the 19th day of June 2018. Let's just throw on a rerun and go have breakfast. What do you say? Let's do a redo. Oh, Reboot. The, the only problem is you have news and we can't run a rerun with news and weather has to be timely and correct and sports has to be up to date. I guess you're just stuck with us for the next hour. Hey, it ain't bad. Wake Up Wenatchee Valley is safely on the air, barely. It is Tuesday, the 19th day of June, 2018. Dan Coots, your host. Steve Hare, my good friend and colleague to my media left, handles the news director duties and Uriah in control as Kat continues her well-deserved week off. We barely have a staff this week, you know? Everybody's kind of sliding in and out and... Well, you know, it's that time of the year. It is, it's the quiet time of the year. Sure we got through, I mean, we had, we had all of the winter sports and then we had Apple Blossom mm -hmm. that we were heavily involved with and then all these commencement exercises that were going on and... They've commenced to doing all the exercises now, so uh, for the next couple of weeks, we're just going to have a nice, quiet time. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the weather will provide us with some, uh, you know, relief here. It's not that bad. Yesterday's high was 84. At what point, and we talked about this before, at what point does warm become hot? For me, it's 90 because it's just a, it's a big number, 90. When we get to 90 degrees, I consider that hot. Anything below 90, warm. It's mild and very, say, very nice. It's very nice weather we're getting. Yeah, uh, 84 was our high yesterday. That means our, we continue. We have not hit 90 yet. We may hit 90 mm -hmm. tomorrow. Forecast details are coming up, but the weather's still a little unsettled. We're not quite there yet. Don't forget uh, the first day of summer is Thursday. Ooh. The summer solstice is in the wee small hours of the morning for us. It's like 3.07 a.m. or something like that on mm -hmm. Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, Favorite so. time of the year. Great Joe Foyer today. Uh, my, my guest in the second half is actually Steve's guest. She came in during the noon hour yesterday during the, her usual lunch break. I'm talking about Judge Kristen Ferreira. Of course, was appointed by Governor Jay Inslee to uh, fill the unexpired seat of retired Judge Alicia Nakata. Uh, she got the gig back in January, and now she's running for election in her own right. And you had a chance to visit with a good judge yesterday. We'll have that interview in the second part of the show. That's right. It's a contested seat, so definitely we'll be... Uh hearing from her challenger as well. Uh, also, we have, of course, as I just mentioned, the weather forecast, sports. Apple Sox are, are struggling, they're hurting. Uh, their defense and their bullpen are letting them down. They lost to Kelowna last night. We got details for that coming up. Mariners didn't play, uh, but they're in Ooh, the Bronx. The big series starts. Yes, here we go. This is a great matchup. It's gonna be really good. Mariners are in Yankee Stadium. It's, it's a classic matchup. You got that, you got that team of, uh, of, of the great mix of rookies and veterans, big payroll, Big bombers always hitting it over the fence. Of course, I'm talking about the Mariners. Then you had that scrappy young Yankee team, you know, just trying, the little engine that could, trying yeah. to go out there and just scrap together little victories here and there. You're joking, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. This is the one time. The well, Bronx the one time, Bombers, you the bet. The Bronx Bombers. This is the time where, I mean, I cheer for the Mariners. I'm a Mariner fan, but I'm a Yankee first and foremost. And when the Yankees play the Mariners, sorry, out comes the NY. Outcomes. And this is where things get real uh, for the Mariners, too. We'll find out what they're made of Absolutely. over the next week because ten, they've got some real tough games coming Ten up. games in ten days. They don't get a break. Yeah. Well, however, they do get to wrap up with the Orioles. They get four games in Baltimore, and Baltimore is by far the worst team in baseball, so well. they should be able to get a few there anyway. But, yeah, they got the Yankees and then Fenway Park and the Red Sox, and then they're off to uh, Camden Yards to take on the Orioles. As you mentioned, it's a, it's a big series. Big series. Big series for the Mariners. Uh, also, we have the obscure holiday birthdays today in history, and everyone is entitled to Mike Minotti's opinion. Happy birthday to Uriah. Oh, Uriah's Happy having a birthday. Happy birthday to Uriah. He's 41 years old. And he's going to be karaokeing tonight. Is he? I don't know. That's if he, I'm all over that. Are you doing that, Uriah? Let's no, do it. No, 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 no. Let's take him out. Let's take him out tonight. I'm game. Okay, let's do, do it. Uh, our producer, one of our top producers, well, one of our producers, anyway, Uriah Darby, celebrates his 41st birthday today. Steve's got a lot of news. You ready to go around the valley? Let's do it. Let's do it. From uh, Local Tell's SkyFi High Speed Wireless Network. Let's see what Uriah has in store for us. Always batting lead off because I love the baseball analogy is the Wenatchee Valley proper. And I mentioned this yesterday. I'll mention it again today. Although here we are now well into June. The river is cold and high mm -hmm. and a lot of junk in it. And it's flowing very fastly. I mean, you know, it, it's got some good momentum going to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. It does. They've been releasing a lot of water from the dam, so, yeah. yeah. So, 
No. I don't know where the PUD is on the re, re, uh, repair of the spit out there at Walla Walla Point Park where the lagoon is. That is where they set up the fireworks for the big uh, Independence Day celebration coming up on Wednesday, July 4th. They shoot the fireworks off the spit, but the spit got all but washed away last month with the heavy uh, downflow in the water. Um, so they, they need to fix that and get that up and going. So okay. uh, I don't know why. Maybe uh, I'll sneak out today and pop so on down. The spit was drooling, in other words. Yeah, right? the spit was, spit's gone. It's what happened. <laughs> it disappeared. Anyway, well, I'll, I'll, I'll endeavor to make it down to Walla Walla Point Park today, Steve, and see where they are in repairing the spit. Uh, camera number two. The spit is drooling. That was good. I just got that. Uh, yes. Rock Island. Rock Island, the lovely hamlet of Rock Island. And ironically enough, you can see Alcoa in that shot. And that's yeah, one of the big yeah. stories. In fact, it is the big story that Steve will have here in just a couple of minutes, the latest on the Alcoa PUD situation. Let's well, we just put it this you. way. The uh, PUD is $62 million richer today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get to sports. The Rock Island Golf Course, plainly in sight. It's going to be a nice day today. No problems there. Camera three. Uriah says, let's slowly dissolve and say hello to you. I want to say that's Union Valley pointed up the lake. That's a pure guess, but I like it. Yep, I'm looking at Wapato Point there mm -hmm. in the distance. Yeah. Union Valley camera, uh, again, all these cameras, we can move them anywhere. We can move them up and down and back and forth and go team, go team, fight, fight, win. Uh, so we have happened to take uh, the, the uh, Union Valley camera and pointing it up Lake Chelan. Good morning to the folks up there. And finally, camera four. The birthday boy says, let's go to Jump Off Ridge. Oh, yes. Let's not jump off Jump Off Ridge, but let's go to Jump Off Ridge. Stemel Basin uh, grows a lot of cherries, but because of the upper elevation, uh, they're usually a couple of weeks behind mm -hmm. uh, as far as the cherry harvest is concerned. The lower elevations where the temperatures will be warmer and stay warmer, those cherries have a tendency to get going first. And basically, you work your way north. So the cherries down in the Tri-City area are done and then Mattawa. And you work your way up to our area, but my guess is, I don't know, but my guess is the, the cherries in the, in the Wenatchee Heights and Stemilt uh, Basin area are probably still maybe a week away. Maybe so, but I'll tell you what, this is the time of the year that tries cherry growers' souls. Oh yeah, because those thunderstorms. Oh my gosh. And we could see some. And hail. And hail. It's a possibility. It's not a big possibility, but it's enough to mention it. In fact, let's go ahead and mention it. From the National Weather Service, let's take a look at your forecast. Again, it's just kind of unsettled. Mm -hmm. A lot of warm air, but the, the high pressure ridge that was really supposed to give us sunny and warm temperature really didn't quite develop. It is allowing some clouds to roll in. And that means you know, a slight fine. chance of rain. Now today, no problems. Mostly sunny, a few high clouds, high of 89. If we get to 89, that would tie for the warmest day of the year so far. It was 84 yesterday. Partly cloudy, 67 tonight. Because of the clouds, it's going to hold in the heat, Steve. So 67 is mild mm -hmm. for the overnight low. It'll be an air conditioning kind of night tonight. Wednesday, get a little bit of everything. There is a chance of thunderstorms. Could, could be associated with small hail and rain, but for the most part, it's going to be mostly sunny. But there is about a 30% chance of a pop-up thunderstorm, most of it late in the afternoon, as you might imagine. We calm down on Wednesday night with an overnight low of 67. Thursday, first day of summer, lots of sunshine, 88. And then we cool down to rather pleasant. I like that. Look at Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. No yeah. problems there oh, at no. all. Uh, that's when we're going to have quite a bit of sunshine. No chance of rain, no wind, no thunderstorms. It's very pleasant weather. It starts, Wednesday, it starts Thursday, but it cools down just enough Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to make it quite comfortable to be we're outside. We're going to set up the trailer out at Anyad Park on Saturday. You're going to go out again? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I understand that's nice. And, yeah, it and is gentlemen. beautiful. So that's your forecast from the National Weather Service. Keeping our fingers crossed that we don't get any late afternoon thunderstorms popping up. That would not be good. It is nine minutes after they are going to take a quick break. So this is your chance to grab a, a glass of orange juice or a cup of coffee or a Pop-Tart. Or whatever you do at this time of the morning. Right. And then get back here in one minute because Steve will have the news in 60 seconds. You're, walk, you're watching Wake Up Financial Valley live this morning from Studio 49 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. RLS Productions presents Concerts in the Gardens held at Omi Gardens this coming summer. Featuring the Infinity Project, a Journey Tribute Band, Two Slim and the Tail Draggers, the Wenatchee Swing and Big Band, the Peter Rivera Band, and Invisible Touch, a Phil Collins Tribute Band. The objectives of the series are to increase midweek tourism to the Wenatchee Valley, the development of a world-class series overlooking the Wenatchee Valley, along with awarding annual scholarships to Wenatchee Valley College students. RLS Productions would like to thank their supporters and volunteers for helping make this all possible. 
What's your Automoka emergency? It's a Frappita Mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the Mocha Frappita. A peach Red Bull. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. Good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. And here are some of the stories we're following around North Central Washington on this 19th day of June. More uncertainty this morning uh, regarding the future of aluminum production at the Wenatchee Works Smelter. This after Alcoa announces it will permanently shut down one of its four pot lines at the Malaga plant site. Alcoa issued a news release late yesterday afternoon uh, reporting the company's decision not to restart production and instead make a $62.4 million payment to Chelan County PUD. It's being made as a deferred payment on the company's power contract that was due on June 18th. An Alcoa spokesman says the closed portions of the Wenatchee site will be evaluated for potential redevelopment but he said that will not affect the status of the three remaining pot lines. The official tells NCW Life News that that could involve a third party, but he did not specify who. Uh, Alcoa curtailed operation at the Wenatchee Works Smelter in 2015, resulting in the layoff of 400 employees. Chelan County received some welcome news last week concerning the pending West Cashmere Bridge rehabilitation project. The Wenatchee Valley Transportation Council voted at their meeting last Thursday to kick in some money. Chelan County Commissioner Keith Gaynor said it's getting closer to becoming a fully funded project. Well, our shortfall has been $2 million. And here at the Transportation Council meeting, there was a motion to allocate $1.6 million to the Goodwin Bridge, which would get us pretty close to full funding. Uh, the county has already put some money in. It would leave us a little bit of a shortfall yet. So it does get us to the point where it, it is a very attainable goal. And we're looking uh, you know, for any additional funding in case we do have overruns. Okay. So is, uh, in terms of the project itself, what's the timeline? Well, we are actually working on it right now. We've done a lot of the archaeological uh, studies. We're securing property. We're moving forward. I'm thinking in uh, 2019, at the end of the, toward the end of the year, we should be able to have something, uh, you know, well designed. And it is designed, but I mean, as far as going out for bid, that's where I'd, I think we'd be looking at. Now, last week, the county received word from the State Office of Freight Mobility that about $3 million in grant funds had been awarded to the project. The old bridge has been designated by the DOT as structurally failing. Coming soon to a Wenatchee intersection near you, that's right, another roundabout. This is a mini version of the roundabout. City crews begin work on a mini roundabout at the intersection of Springwater and Western, similar to the roundabout at Western Avenue and Cherry Street in Wenatchee. City planners say the new traffic feature will ease the amount of traffic on Western and will make it safer for pedestrians to, to cross the street in that location. At their regular meeting last week, the council awarded a $413,000 contract to Hearst Construction for the project, around 23% more than city engineers estimated. Uh, but a $230,000 federal grant will pay for the rest of the project, which is said to begin on July 9th and finish by the end of August. Well, by this time next year, a new affordable housing project will be under construction in Wenatchee. Catholic Family Charities is spearheading the development as part of the Wenatchee Supportive Housing Community Project on the south side of town, on the side of the old Viewdale Drive-In Theater. The project recently received a major funding boost from Chelan County. Brian Ketchum with the church's Yakima Diocese commented. We are just profoundly grateful for the local support and strong commitment of the Chelan County in um, forward committing um, over $700,000 uh, towards the development um, of this uh, critical affordable housing uh, to be located in Wenatchee. Uh, we're in the final stages of our, our last uh, competitive application process, and if successful, uh, we'll be able to move forward with construction uh, in the next eight months. 
And uh, in turn, Catholic Charities will set aside 50% of the apartment dwellings for homeless families with children. Yeah, this development will, it'll be a 67-unit development. 50% uh, of the units will be serving homeless individuals and families, and the remaining 50% will serve uh, general low-income um, households. Meanwhile, the county share of the funding comes from a percentage of the revenue collected from recording fees, as approved by the state legislature in the last session. Well, in a news release yesterday, the Chelan Douglas Health District says two additional bats have tested positive for rabies in the Wenatchee area. That makes three bats in our area that have tested positive this year for rabies. One was found in Wenatchee, two more discovered in the Kashmir area. Uh, Veronica Farias uh, with the Chelan Douglas Health District says about two to three rabid bats are found in the Wenatchee Valley each year. She also tells us what to do in case you find a bat. So basically the first thing is um, determine whether or not you did become in contact with the bat. If it's determined that you haven't, the first thing would be definitely don't touch the bat. And then the second thing would be call animal control so they could come and get the bat for you. Third thing would be to call the health district to determine whether or not it needs to be tested for rabies. And then we also have some information online on how to safely capture a bat in your home. So that would be a good place to go. Another good tip would be just to definitely um, make sure your pets, you know, your dogs and cats, ferrets are vaccinated. Um, in the past two to three years, we've had about two additional bats with rabies. And to avoid possible exposure to the disease, rabies do not touch live or dead bats and to make sure your home's open windows have screens. A weekend thunderstorm serves notice that the summer wildfire season has arrived. Lake Wenatchee Fire and Rescue Chief Mick Lamar says his crews are ready to respond if needed. We had a lightning storm move through here the other night. It takes three or four days for those fires to pop up. But um, fire season's upon us. And in our particular neck of the woods, one of the things that we're seeing now is outside agencies like the University of Washington, Portland State University, Washington State, even the DOD, FDA, the Forest Service, all changing their, their opinion on how we look at treating the forest. Our forests are unhealthy. They're dangerous. And up in Plain, we live in the middle of that danger. We have to be prepared and have great partnerships to respond to our folks. Indeed, that thunderstorm for the week and produced some fires. As a matter of fact, officials with the Central Washington Interagency Communications Center at SWIC at Pangbourne Airport report several small lightning spark fires from Saturday's storm activity. In fact, uh, one of them was located on a ridgetop in Sunbird Canyon in the Chumstick area. A crew of U.S. Forest Service firefighters uh, got that fire contained. We can see more fire activity if holdover lightning strikes get reignited when the weather starts to heat up. Also beginning today and running through July 8th, the Wenatchee Police Department along with East Wenatchee, OMAC Police, Okanagan Sheriff, Chelan and Douglas County Sheriff Departments will participate in extra patrols focusing on speed laws through a grant funded by the Washington Traffic Safety Commission. Officer Graves, the Wenatchee Police Department provides us with more. Hello, I'm Officer Graves with Wenatchee Police Department. Speed-related collisions with injuries and fatalities continue to happen on our Central Washington roadways. Law enforcement will be conducting extra patrols June 19th through July 8th for speeding drivers. If we all watch our speed, we can reduce these collisions and their terrible impacts on our communities. And again, the objectives of the speed patrols are to enforce those laws by discouraging speeding and to educate the public on the risks of driving above the posted speed or too fast for conditions. These account for more than a third of all deadly crashes in Washington state. Answers that old question on the driver's test that you took. What is the basic speed law? What is the basic speed law? Yeah, you can never drive faster than the, the posted car goes? speed limit or oh. what is safe. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you can never drive faster than the car will actually go. <laughs> well, in your case, I can understand. <laughs> My driving record is impeccable. Never drive faster than it's safe. Okay, I just no. I, I I'm a I'm a good driver. I've only been in like six accidents, and, yeah. only, and only twelve are my fault. I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> 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 the news with Grant Olson comes your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock tonight. Don't forget, those are your three chances to watch it on television, or as we like to say in the business, TV. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock, also available on our website, available on our Facebook page late in the afternoon, early in the evening. I'm handling sports today. 
because uh, our beloved leader, Eric Granstrom, is on assignment today. That's the name of the boat. <laughs> He and Dave and a bunch of guys went fishing, and yeah. that's I'm all I'm all for that. I think he deserves that. Eric works hard, and you know he's taking the day off. I'm gonna go see if he can catch some sturgeon up at Lake Roosevelt today. Bring me back a pan fry, please. Yeah. yeah. So Eric's fishing today. Good for him. So I'll be handling sports. Good luck with that. Uh, and the, all the usual shenanigans apply. Five o'clock, six o'clock, and ten o'clock. Don't forget, you can be a part of our news team. You don't get paid. But you get our everlasting respect, and that's how you go about doing it. Steve, please do the honors. Write to us. First of all, our email address is news at ncwlife.com. You can talk to us on Facebook or Twitter. Also on our website at ncwlife.com. There's a little tab at the top of the page. You just click Contact Us or News Tips and provide us with information on any stories or events you want us to cover. And, of course, our hotline, always available for breaking news at 888-6295. Don't forget, still to come, sports, Apple Sox, uh, they're not playing particularly good baseball. We'll talk about that. Mariners didn't play yesterday. They begin a big series tonight. Go Ams! In the Bronx, go Yankees. The Huskies have been eliminated from the College World Series. We'll have that, all that in sports. We saw the obscure holiday to get to. Today in history, birthdays. Everyone is entitled to my opinion, not his opinion. In Steve's conversation with Judge Kristen Ferreira. We'll all come between now and 8 o'clock. You're watching Wake Up with Anchi Valley. Live this morning from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live channel. It's a free walk-in job search assistance center. It is designed to help job seekers with the tools that they need to find a job. We have partnered with libraries in five other cities providing the same types of services that we offer here, just there. Just walk in, we have laptops, and uh, we can help you with resume, cover letter. All of our services are paid for by the revenues earned in our store. Goodwill is just a tool that the community is using to help their neighbors find a job. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hare. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. And we're back on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up in Anchi Valley. I am Dan Koontz. High cloud 63 degrees, mostly sunny and a high of 89. Could get a light thunderstorm, however, on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Sports, well, they out hit the Kelowna Falcons. They took an early 3-0 lead, but the Wenatchee Apple Sox lost their series finale. The final last night of Paul Thomas Senior Field was 9-6. The culprit for the Apple Sox, sloppy defense and a bullpen that couldn't get any outs. Mason Marenko is having a really good year for the Apple Sox. He went four for five at the plate. He had hits in his first three at-bats, scored a couple of runs, his second inning double, team high fourth of the season. Apple Sox enter the fourth inning with a three-run lead. They struck in the first inning for the second straight day with one out. Marenko had a base hit. Johnny Sage doubled him in on the very next pitch. Connor McCord drove home Sage with a base hit. In the third inning, Sage again came through with an RBI. After Joey, Joey Magro singled and uh, Marenko doubled to put the runners at second and third, Sage lifted, lifted a sacrifice fly. That scored Magro, everything's looking good, and then well, they just couldn't hold the lead. Kelowna struck for three in the fourth inning on four consecutive base hits. That tied the game. Neither team scored in the fifth. The Falcons added two more in the sixth after a couple of errors. A solo shot in the seventh, some passed balls, a balk. Things kind of fell apart for the Apple Sox. They loaded the bases, though, in the, in the ninth inning. An RBI double scored some runs, but then that was it again. The final was, as you see on your screen, 9-6 to six with a loss. The Sox dropped to 4-7. and seven in league play, so they've dropped two or three to Kelowna. The Apple Sox will be hosting the Walla Walla Suites. Three game series, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Paul Thomas Senior Stadium, first pitch for each game, 7.05. Just one other game, by the way, in West Coast League last night. The Victoria Harbor, Co Victoria Harbor Cats shut out the Bend Elks. The final was six to nothing. College World Series, Oregon State trailed 5-4, bases loaded, two out, top of the sixth inning. Tyler Malone came to the plate, and here came the rain and the lightning. The game was delayed for four hours and 31 minutes. That is a very 
long today uh, delay, but they eventually got the game in. Malone worked closer uh, Alex Hardy of, for University of Washington. Uh, a walk that scored the tie and run. It was 5-5, and then, well, the rains came for the Huskies. Beavers took over. They had a two-run, uh, two-out rally uh, with a three-run homer, and then they tacked on five more in the eighth inning, and for the Huskies, it was all over. So Washington's great season. They made it to the final eight of the College World Series came to an end. In fact, it rained so hard and for so long that the second game yesterday, Mississippi State and North Carolina State, they couldn't even play it. They'll play that game this morning at 8 o'clock for the Huskies. Their season has come to an end. Mariners have a 10-game, 10 10-day 10 road trip. Begins tonight. They're in the Bronx taking on the Yankees. Marco Gonzalez goes for the Mariners. Domingo German will start for the Yankees. First pitch, 405. The Idle Mariners lost ground to the Astros yesterday. The Astros won again, make it 12 in a row. Alex Bregman delivered the walk-off two-run double to cap, to, uh, cap a comeback. They scored four runs down, and they defeated, Houston did, they defeat the Tampa Bay Rays 5-4 to four in extra innings at Minute Maid Park in Houston. The Astros have won 12 in a row. That ties a franchise record. And that's sports. At 26 minutes after the hour, the obscure holiday of the day today. Today is sauntering day. It's a good day to saunter. It's basically walking lazily. Most people, well, I know a lot of people, they walk with a pur purpose. When they're walking, they're walking. I go down to the trail and I see people with their headphones on and they get their Fitbit and they're just walking away and they're walking and they're exercising. And I'm, I'm more of a saunterer. Uh, sauntering Day uh, was the brainchild of W.T. Rabby, who created at the Grand Hotel in, at, the, uh, at Mackinac Island in Michigan in the late 1970s because the jogging craze had taken over America. And he thought, nah, it's, it's saunter instead of, uh, instead of walk. Take a little stroll. Don't walk too fast. Don't walk too slow. Just saunter. I'm a saunterer, unless I'm golfing. If I'm golfing and I'm walking, I walk with a purpose. But uh, if I'm just walking for the heck of it, I prefer to saunter. I also never look down. I have a tendency to look around. I bump into a lot of things. Happy World Sauntering Day today, June 19th. Today in history, it's all about firsts. Three significant things happened for the very first time on June 19th. On June 19th, 1846, 172 years ago today, the first officially recorded organized baseball game is played under the rules of Alexander Cartwright. It was Alexander Cartwright who invented baseball, not Nelson Doubleday. Let's just get that out of the way right now. The official baseball rules, very first game in Hoboken, New Jersey, right across the river from New York City. The New York Baseball Club defeated the New York Knickerbockers. The final was 23 to 1, and Alexander Cartwright himself was the umpire today, the first officially recorded organized baseball game. Baseball is 172 years old today. Happy 108th birthday to Father's Day. The very first Father's Day was celebrated in Spokane, of all places, on June 19th, 1910. It was at the YMCA in Spokane. The YMCA is no longer there. That's a plaque. That's outside where it used to uh, used to be. Sonoa Smart Dodd. Her father was a Civil War veteran. Uh, his name is William Jackson Smart. Uh, he was a widower. He had six kids and he raised them all by himself. And in honor of that, Miss Sonoa Smart Dodd created Father's Day in honor of her father. And the very first one was celebrated in Spokane 108 years ago today. So we had the first baseball game, the first Father's Day. How about the first ever NASCAR race? That took place on this date. June 19th, 1949 at Charlotte Motor Speedway, 69 years ago today, the first ever NASCAR race. It was won by Glenn Dunaway, but Glenn Dunaway cheated. He was disqualified. He had he, his rear springs on a stock car had been altered, and so they gave it to Jim Roper, who won the very first NASCAR race. Yes, they were cheating even back then, 69 years ago today. And finally, birthdays. On this June 19th, Mo Howard, the American comedian, the leader, if you were the de facto leader, I guess you should say, of the Three Stooges, uh, stars of motion pictures and television for four decades. Mo Howard, there's Mo, was born in the state in 1897, lived a long and fruitful life, died at the age of 77 back in 1975. You'll see I got Curly on my, my show. I had Curly, Mo, and Larry, um, the dog got to Mo and Larry. I was able to save Curly, the Three Stooges, Mo Howard, born in this state in 1897. Greatest first baseman of all time, Henry Louis
Gehrig, my favorite Yankee, was born on this date. In 1903, of course, tragically died of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis at the age of 37 back in 1941. He was the first athlete in any sport at any time to have his number retired, his number four. In fact, he was the only Yankee ever to wear number four. So when you see retired jerseys, be it baseball or football or basketball or hockey, you see retired jerseys hanging up in the rafters. The very first athlete ever to have his number retired was Lou Gehrig's number four. And in 1934, he won the Major League Triple Crown, one of the rarest achievements you can ever do. And in 1934, Triple Crown winner and baseball legend Lou Gehrig finished fifth in the MVP voting. Lou Gehrig, born in the state of 1903. Uh, Macklemore celebrates a birthday, the American rapper, Seattle legend. He was born Benjamin Hammond Haggerty, Macklemore is 35 years old today. Pretty good music, too, I gotta say. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, our top content producer, Uriah Darby, is 40-something years old today. Happy birthday, Uriah. We'll, ta we'll take you out tonight. We'll have a good time. Happy birthday, Uriah. 31 minutes after the hour, everyone is entitled to Mike Magnani's opinion. We'll find out what's on Mike's mind here in just a few minutes. And then Steve Harris' conversation with Judge Kristen Ferreira who was running for election in her own right. She was appointed to a Chelan County Superior Court seat bench back in January. Now she's running for election in her own right. She dropped by and paid us a visit in these studios yesterday in her conversation with Steve Hare. Still to come on this edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, live this morning from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. Arbiter of Stoke is a series that highlights a variety of outdoor adventure sports that are available in the Pacific Northwest. I dedicate my time to enjoying this natural playground. The decision is yours. How will you keep your Stoke? I have a doctor who knows what they're talking about. It's just so much more hands-on and friendly than anywhere else I've ever been. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed, you feel accepted. We've just been grateful for the care and respect that we've been given there. And here when I come to visit my doctor, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's not just about getting you in and out. I love my care, it's CBCH, it's awesome. Give it a try. <laughs> Walk and Roll Wenatchee's Asian Express is fast, fresh food. Wenatchee Roll's new Pokey Hawaiian Fresh Salad Bar is the best. Fresh greens, fresh seafood, and handmade sauces. You know what you want. At Walk and Roll, create your own style meal. Hot off the line chicken, beef, and veggie plates. Lunch or dinner to match your appetite. Fresh sushi, hot entrees, Pokey Fresh Salad Bar. It's new. It's Walk and Roll Wenatchee fast, fresh food your way. Located on 5th and Mission. Hi everyone, Brent. Hey, don't mind, we're just making a commercial here, Randall. You're okay. Hi everyone, Brent here. Jeez. <laughs> You're gonna love this. When you see this, come down and see us behind Nissan. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. The all new 2018 Nissan. That's done, I'm done. We can't do it. Come down and see us at Town Nissan behind Costco and East Wenatchee. Better performance, better proof. If you want to work in healthcare, choose the program that teaches the skills employers want. The Charter College Medical Assistant Program combines hands-on learning in the lab with convenient online learning, plus real-life experience with an externship. Classes start every five weeks, so you don't have to wait to launch your new career. Enroll with confidence, knowing Charter is institutionally accredited by the Accrediting Bureau of Health Education Schools. And be ready to work in less than a year. Charter College. We work to get you to work. Hey there, Wenatchee. I'm Sean Lee, and I'm inviting you to come down and check out what we're all about at Badger Mountain Brewing. Great beer, good food, and an endless source of entertainment for the whole family. Our honey blonde beer is flying off the shelves at your local grocery store. But I tell you what, it's even better on tap. And while you're here, try our signature badger sauce with one of our delicious meals. Whether you're in the mood for a wrap, salad, pizza, or nachos, Badger Mountain Brewing has what you're looking for.
Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I'm a book nut. Reading is about my favorite thing to do, and I'm a real fan of digital books. My tablet can hold more books than I'll ever be able to read. I love the way I can set it up at the table, right at the table, so it's the right height, so I can read while I'm eating alone. And the fact that I don't need to worry about sufficient lighting is very cool, particularly as my eyes get older. But I still hope we never lose libraries. When I was in first grade, we moved to an apartment that was right across the street from the Caldwell, New Jersey Public Library. And that place was my salvation. It was warm, both physically and emotionally. And that's where I read books that explained to me how to tell jokes and how to play second base. Seriously, I read a book that helped me become a pretty good softball infielder. Libraries, I love them. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Vamanos Junk Haulers are pleased to announce they've added moving services to their list of ways to make your life easier. Vamanos Moving Service. No move is too big or small. In fact, Vamanos does it all. Vamanos employees are experienced at moving your home, office, business, and storage. They'll carefully load and unload your belongings. And for the do-it-yourselfers, Vamanos also rents trucks and cargo trailers. Call Vamanos Junk Haulers and Moving Service today to schedule your free estimate. Boating is a great way to bring family and friends together. At Bobfile Boats and Motors, they have the boats for any lifestyle, fishing, wakeboarding, or just relaxing on the water. Buying a new boat is more affordable than you might think at Bobfile Boats and Motors, online at bobfile.com or on Sunset Highway in East Wenatchee. Bobfile Boats and Motors, we're dealing. Bobfile's gonna make you smile. We're here to celebrate every season with award-winning dining, full-service spa, and 170 waterfront guest rooms. Come experience our tradition of hospitality at Campbell's Resort on Lake Chelan. When you call Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, you get 35 years of experience and customer service in the Wenatchee Valley. Dick's friendly staff strongly believe in repairing before replacing and service all major brands of HVAC units. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning is your local, independent, trained comfort specialists, proudly serving all of North Central Washington. Call 884-6444 today. Welcome back to NCW Live Channel. We continue to interview candidates that are running for election in the upcoming fall elections. Joining me right now is uh, Chelan County Superior Court Judge Kristen Ferreira, who is looking to be retained uh, on the bench here in Chelan County. And uh, well, welcome to the program once again. This is our second opportunity to talk to you, Judge. Yes, thank you for having me on. You betcha. Let's talk about, uh, first of all, I want to talk about how you uh, got to where you are now. Uh, can you walk us through that process that uh, the governor instantly used uh, to appoint you to the bench? Yes. Um, so uh, when a judge, a superior court judge, retires in the middle of the their term, then the the governor is supposed to appoint then a replacement mm -hmm. until the next election, and the process for that it's it's actually on, uh, I believe it's the governor's website and also the State Bar Association's website where there's a judicial application mm -hmm. and you, um, they invite applications and everybody fills out the same application and they request a, about 25 references <laughs> and um, as a part of that application process we're also encouraged to get um, interviewed and screened by other uh, minority bar associations within the state and also the local bar association uh, does their own bar poll 
and selects who they think would be uh, their top choice, their first choice, their second choice, etc., as to this position, and then they also um, state whether they think the applicants are qualified or not qualified. And so, Pretty extensive. It is. It is, and they take that into consideration. They also take into consideration the opinions of the sitting judges. Um, and what the references are not only the people that, that we worked with, but also the people that we worked against. So we have to list 10 opposing counsels, <laughs> that, uh, so 10 attorneys that we worked on the other side of as another part of that process, people that they talk to and they, they try to find out who is this person, not only what is your legal experience, um, are you qualified for the job, but also who is the person, what's their character and their demeanor, is this the right person for the job. So there are different layers that you have to go through, uh, yes. apparently. Uh, did, did you also have the opportunity to be interviewed by the governor himself? I did. Um, the first interview, so all of the candidates were interviewed by the Governor's Council, and that was actually two individuals, and that those were the um, kind of the main interviews for, as a part of the screening process. And then once they went through all of the applications and they went through all the references and the interview, then they sent um, me as a candidate to the Governor as, as a final interview, and, and he said, uh, I have confidence that Kristen Ferrer will be the right person for the job. And uh, let me ask you, since uh, since now you've been on the, in the court now on the bench uh, for a period of time, uh, have, has it transitioned well for you, uh, working from a, from an attorney now to the other side of the bar? It has, yes. Um, that first month was definitely, uh, I'd say, trial by <laughs> fire because I had the. Uh, it was the criminal calendar month, we call, we call it the presiding month, but it's the month where you have um, the criminal hearings on Mondays and Wednesdays, you have the domestic violence hearings on Tuesday mornings. It's a very set schedule and you have many cases on, um, I think the first day I had, uh, I think they said over 90 cases with hearings. Now they're very short hearings, mm -hmm. but those were all criminal cases that I had to hear that day. And so it was it, it was a new experience, but uh, I, I asked a lot of questions of the sitting judge, uh, the sitting judges, uh, Judge Small and Judge Allen were extremely helpful. Um, and I also made sure I read uh, as much as I possibly could and I was prepared for each case. And, um, and so after the last few months, I think it's been six months now, um, I, I do feel like it's been a very good transition. Very good. Uh, difficult, definitely. To, to, and, and being in a position of power like that, I suppose, is a, a different sensation as well, isn't it? It is, and, and I definitely feel that more on some cases. Uh, there have been a couple of points where I had to make a decision that I felt the weight and authority of being a judge mm -hmm. and how important this is, especially not only to the individuals involved in that particular case, but in the community overall. And uh, I I truly take that responsibility seriously. I'm a part of this community. I'm raising my children in this community. Um, I, I, I want to make sure that we keep this community safe. And when we're talking about the criminal cases, that that's, that's what we're doing, is, is doing our best to keep the community safe. Well, certainly we all want to know more about Judge Kristen Ferreira and your professional life, but I'm sure that a lot of our viewers might like to know you in your personal life as well. Okay. So again, you do have a daughter? I have two daughters. Two daughters. I have, um, they're both, three. they're three and five, <laughs> so very young, um, and uh, I have, uh, I'm married, and we actually, we were married here in Wenatchee, and our ch we're raising our children here, and um, I, uh, before I started work here, so my entire professional career has been here in the Valley, um, but prior to that I went to law school at the University of Washington and um, and I traveled around a little bit. I lived in Beijing, China for a year. Oh, and did. Yes, and I, um, and I also lived in Gallup, New Mexico for two years. I taught fifth grade there um, and I also was an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer as well. Oh, fun. So. 
So what do you like to do when you're not uh, in court, um, in your fun time? I like to run and I like to hike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did the, uh, I ran the Wenatchee Half Marathon in April and I'm hoping to run the, the Leavenworth Marathon, Half Marathon in uh, October if I can stay on top of the mileage. So um, I like to go fishing. We actually just spent yesterday fishing up at Lake Chelan. Oh fun. Um, and I like to spend time, we have, we have dogs and mm -hmm. pets and so I like to spend time with them as well. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, again, we're talking with Kristen Ferreira, who is uh, a judge in the Chelan County Superior Court, and she's seeking to be retained in the upcoming election. I wanted to ask you just a few uh, related questions to your profession. Um, as a prospective judge, what do you consider your greatest strengths? I have a few that I think are incredibly important to being a judge. Um, one is the ability to be fair and impartial walking into a case, not having predetermined ideas about what I'm going to do, but listening to both sides. And, and truly having the ability to do that and also making sure every time that I review the law and understand it, um, as well as I think honesty and integrity are incredibly important. Uh, having the background and knowledge that I have in the various areas of law uh, have been that's been incredibly helpful especially in the civil side uh, because when we have cases we don't have we prepare as much as we can but we have a lot of cases during the week and so sometimes we don't have as much time as we'd like as we do as attorneys mm -hmm. to prepare for these cases we say we have a civil case that has to do with construction law the attorneys who have been preparing that case have spent months and months on that case and then we they have to distill it into um, maybe an hour or a few days depending on whether it's a hearing or a trial and so that background and knowledge that I have in those various areas of law has really helped me as well. Interesting as a candidate I know you don't like to talk about weaknesses but uh, are there any weaknesses that you would like that you would identify? Um, well, initially, I was, I was, I guess I would say when I first started, I was worried about that I had less of the criminal law background. And I'll say it, it's now the way that attorneys work and um, the way the legal profession is in, in this community, it's going to be difficult to find an attorney that has extensive background in every single area of law that we hear as Superior Court judges. And so there's always going to be an area that somebody has less experience in. I had some criminal law experience, but I certainly didn't have um, as much as I would have liked. Mm -hmm. But it was an area that, uh, like I said, I went in in January and <laughs> trial by fire, and I um, have learned so much about the process at the at the Superior Court level as a judge that now I don't think of it, I, I'm not worried about it, but it definitely initially made me nervous. <laughs> Um, I know that you have been involved in the uh, establishment of a, of a drug court here in Chelan County. Uh, key, in keeping with that topic, uh, how would you characterize right now our war on drugs? Has it been effective or ineffective? Well, that's tough to say. I will say that I know that the um, opiate and meth uh, use has gone up increasingly. Uh, one of the things that we are seeing um, that just keeps getting worse and worse is the overdoses. In 2016, there were 65,000 people that died of drug overdoses. That's more people than died in the Vietnam War. More Americans, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. It's significant, and so it's getting worse. And uh, one of the things about the drug court is it's bit by bit trying to help people get to the point where they're not coming back, where they're not reusing. It's more than, re um, it's more than treatment. It's um, changing their life path. And uh, reducing recidivism. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. All right, what are the biggest changes you think we need to make in our justice system, Judge Ferreira? I have noticed the one thing that as a judge I find, uh, I would say the most frustrating because I don't feel like we have um, that the system is, is addressing the mental health issues that we're seeing both in criminal court and also in other, in other areas of the court, for example, dependencies and family law. And we just don't have the laws and the setup in place to handle the mental health issues that we're seeing. Gotcha. And they have been 
uh, increasing significantly over the last few years and we just don't we don't have the space for people we don't have the methods to deal with these issues as, as well as we would like to so that's something that's going to need to change very good well, uh, Judge Ferrara, I'm going to give you the last word here on why uh, why someone should select you over someone else for Chelan County Superior Court Judge. Thank you. Um, I am definitely the most qualified candidate for this position. Uh, I have the background and experience that's necessary. I also have the drive to improve upon what we have, and I am I'm honest. I am fair, I will hear both sides, and I am dedicated, I'm a hard worker, and I'm going to make sure that every time I come into a case, I have read as much as I can, and I, I've, I've read the record, I know what both parties have submitted, and I'm prepared to ask questions and then come to the right result. That's all we can ask of a candidate. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us, and Thank good you. luck. Thank you very much. I'm Steve Hare, NCW Life News. RLS Productions presents Concerts in the Gardens held at Omi Gardens this coming summer. Featuring the Infinity Project, a Journey tribute band, Two Slim and the Tail Draggers, the Wenatchee Swing and Big Band, the Peter Rivera Band, and Invisible Touch, a Phil Collins tribute band. The objectives of the series are to increase midweek tourism to the Wenatchee Valley, the development of a world-class series overlooking the Wenatchee Valley, along with awarding annual scholarships to Wenatchee Valley College students. RLS Productions would like to thank their supporters and volunteers for helping make this all possible. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha Frappitas. A peach Red Bull. I'm Jenny Rojanasatian, and this is Guada TV. Every week we will be bringing you a first look at North Central Washington business, tech, and education news. You'll hear from local influencers and innovators who live right here in the Valley. Together we'll discuss hot topics, current events, and resources that can support your business, our schools, and this community. Join me every week and let's get inspired. I definitely recommend them for new floors. They made it so easy. It looks like a whole new house. Great service, great prices. Want a recommendation before you buy new carpets or floors? Don't take our word for it, just listen to our customers. And they guarantee their work for life. Flooring America, where friends send friends. Select pet-friendly, kid-friendly, oops-friendly carpet and floors are on sale now. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on fresh. Here's the deal. If it comes from a freezer, not fresh. Box, not fresh. Bag, not fresh. Fresh means just chopped vegetables. Cheese grated by us daily. Fresh means we don't even have ovens because you have an oven. So you can feel good about feeding it to your oh. home bake a large gourmet delight Greek pepperoni pizza topped with pepperoni, spinach, black olives and feta cheese. Just $9. Papa Murphy's love at 425 degrees. Yamaha ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles are proven off-road. Designed, engineered, and tested in the real world, they provide the best balance of off-road capability, comfort, and confidence. Delivering performance that is truly proven off-road. You're back. <laughs> uh, high clouds, 68 degrees already in the Wenatchee Valley. Going to climb the ladder to 89 degrees. I'm going to give you a forecast here in uh, just a couple of minutes. Hold tight for that. Uh, Steve Harris rejoined me to get you to the top of the hour and get you out the door here on this Tuesday. Pretty uh, exciting news in Douglas County. We just got a press release. About yeah, an hour we ago. have some breaking news uh, to share with you this morning. This out of Douglas County, where we're learning that uh, the county is now moving forward with the construction of a new law and justice facility. It's going to house the 
sheriff's office, the district court, the juvenile probation, um, the uh, IT infrastructure, and the future coroner's office as well. Uh, they're going to go ahead with the $8 million construction. It's going to be located there in East Wenatchee, there off 19th Street near the uh, uh, Transportation and Land Services building. But again, a huge project moving forward, and now they've uh, signed on the dotted line and ready to proceed with the project, and I'm sure we'll get more on that uh, as the day progresses. But we'll be in touch with the Douglas County Commissioners to learn more about the project and uh, what it means for Is it going to be, they just built that new evidence room. Is it going to be behind room? it, next to it, up to the next side to, of it? Adjacent okay. to it. Adjacent yeah. to it, mm -hmm. so. The same location. 18,000 square feet, that's pretty big. That's a big, big uh, new center. Yeah. So that uh, kind of centralizes it a little better, too, yeah. I think, for the... Yeah, uh, Douglas the County is in a unique position in that the county seat, where most of the business of the county is done, mm -hmm. is in Waterville. But the vast majority of things that need to be taken care of is in the greater East Wenatchee area. It's the more the you know, 80, area. Eighty-five percent of the people who live in Douglas County live in the greater East Wenatchee area, mm -hmm. and those are the ones who have to do those things and when they do business with the county. And it's just inconvenient sometimes to drive up to Waterville. And the Second Street facility that currently houses, let's say, the district court and the sheriff's mm -hmm. office is. Uh, well, it's really kind of getting uh, overcrowded. It, so. it's, it, and it's out of date, too. My guess is the infrastructure, HVAC and all that stuff is mm -hmm. kind of running out of gas. It says so here the extensive repairs are necessary in the current facility on 2nd Street, so. such as replacement of the roof, HVAC, carpeting, mm -hmm. employee safety upgrades and such, so they're going ahead. And the financing, they'll be able to take care of, uh, apparently, without having to raise taxes. So wow, that's, that's pretty good. good. Maybe yeah. they can borrow $63 million from Alcoa. Well, they're saying <laughs> that they're able to finance the law through existing revenue streams. Oh, good. So, so there you have it. Good news for them. We'll have uh, more on this with the news with Grant Olson at 5 o'clock tonight, including uh, hopefully an architectural rendering of the uh, we have proposed it. building. Matter of fact, we'll be, in fact, I'm um, getting ready to post it to our website right now. So go to ncwlife.com and you'll learn more. We've got a busy rest of the week. Um, I guess tomorrow on this show live here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee, uh, our friends from Columbia Valley Community Health, he's been on the show many, many times, Catherine Grove and David Olson uh -huh. will be on the show tomorrow because uh, they have uh, Wenatchee Pride Day is being held at the Pipus Public Market this Saturday. It's a big party. Uh, they're going to have live music, a beer garden, face painting, bouncy house for kids. Uh, it's going to be um, a huge deal. Uh, the goal of the event, and I'm quoting from the press release, peacefully connect as a community of LGBTQ plus families and straight allies and come together as one that shows that love trumps all. It's a big event Aww. at the Pibus, and that'll be the topic tomorrow with Catherine and David from Columbia Valley Community Health. They're one of the main sponsors. Uh, Thursday, of course, is the first day of summer, and whenever we have the summer solstice, uh, whenever we change the seasons officially, Bonnie Orr. The Dirt Diva comes on oh, Bonnie Orr, uh, my friend, host of Green Thumbs and Dirty Knees. So, with Thursday being the first day of summer, Bonnie Orr will be my guest on Thursday. We'll talk about what you need to know as we head into summer full swing with gardening tips with Bonnie. That'll be on Thursday, uh, the 21st. On uh, Friday, our friends from CASA will be here. Sue court, Baker? Court appointed space, special advocacy. No, Sue couldn't make it. So, uh, Kenzie English, who's the volunteer mm -hmm. coordinator, will be joining me along with Arlene Grover. Arlene and Kenzie will be here on Friday. They are in such a need of volunteers for CASA. They're doing something they've never done before. They're going to have summer training this year. Normally, they take the summer off. But as you well know, Steve, to train mm -hmm. CASA volunteers, court-appointed special advocates for children uh, mm -hmm. who are going through the court system, uh, it's a significant training. It is. It's a lot to go and through. It, and it's a commitment, too. It's a commitment. For anybody who volunteers with CASA learns that uh, that is quite a commitment, and it can be quite emotional. Well, they need volunteers, and yeah. they need them now, and so they're going to do a summertime training for the first time ever. That'll be coming up uh, soon, and so uh, we're going to have Kenzie and Arlene on this show on Friday. On Monday, uh, the Let's Have a Blast Committee will be back uh, as we get closer and closer to Independence Day, find out where we are and raising the money for the big fireworks show and everything like that. And we briefly teased about what's going on up in Leavenworth. Uh, the interview that you did yesterday with uh, Mick Lamar. Mick Lamar, We're chief We're going to air that the... interview in full on Monday because Monday's a big day for Leavenworth. Yeah, fire, uh, fire Leavenworth fires. actually uh, is hoping to be able to acquire some property to expand its facilities, the Lake Wenatchee Fire and Rescue up in the Plain area. But right now there's kind of a little bit of a controversy surrounding the 10 acres of land that they want to acquire from the Cascade School District. Cascade School District, by the way, their board is having a meeting on July or June 25th next Monday. Which is Monday, so it's so good we'll learn more about what's going on there. They are trying to build a new facility to meet growth needs up in the upper Wenatchee Valley, and the Lake Wenatchee uh, Fire and Rescue right now is working to acquire some land. So 
Yeah. We'll learn more about it with Chief Lamar. So two interview segments on Monday. The Let's yeah. Have a Blast Committee as we get closer and closer to 4th of July and then Mick Lamar. Uh, will be the second part. Real quickly, the forecast looks like this. Uh, could get 90 today. Don't know. Uh, mostly sunny and a few high clouds. High today of about 89. Slight chance of some thunderstorms. I mean a slight chance, but enough to mention it on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then things calm down and settle out. Cross your for, fingers, cherry growers. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Just keep your fingers crossed. That's it for this Tuesday edition of Wake Up Financial Valley. Don't forget the news with Grant Nelson, 5 o'clock tonight. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> we did it. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Joining us now on NC.